Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of A Gardener's Journey Homestead. Welcome to my tunnel. Today, I wanna see if I can finish planting. I'm on a mad dash. I wanna clear my table, my seed starting table that I have all of my seedlings in my transplant. So that's what I'm focused on today. If you're new here, I'm in zone 7A in the state of Tennessee. And so let's go. Okay y'all, here's the task at hand. Here is the middle row. You see, I have that row planted, that row planted, and I have that row planted. We're not going to talk about the last row. Here is the project for today is to get this whole row planted. Um, and hopefully that will reduce a lot of the stuff that's um, on the table that needs to be planted out. So here's the tray of stuff we're going to plant out. It is broccoli and cabbage. Um, I have some broccoli rob, regular broccoli and cabbage. That's what's going to go in this row. And so we're going to amend the hold as we go and we're going to get to planting. Okay guys, you can see the hubby came to help me out. He is saving my back today and I am very appreciative. So we're pretty much 75% down the row. Um, and I'm, I was saying this is broccoli and cabbage. It is mostly all broccoli. I think I'll have a two cabbages at the end, but pretty much this is all broccoli. This row has about 25 spaces in it. So y'all know I have been unsuccessful with broccoli all three years. I love broccoli, I probably eat it once a week um and buy it fresh so yes i have a lot of broccoli in the ground because i'm just hoping that it's my broccoli year i'm hoping it's my broccoli year i'm hoping it's my carrot year like these are the things especially broccoli we eat a ton of i would love to have some to put in the freezer but first base is first i would love to have some just to eat in my house <laughs> on my plate so i'm hoping and hoping and hoping that this goes well so the broccoli that i have is green magic um one other kind i can't remember the name of it and then i did some broccoli rob which is supposed to be quicker um and just like the little smaller pieces of broccoli florets so if you have any tips on growing great broccoli let me know and the thing is they get ahead but the heads are small and then I always wait and say, oh, okay, let me let them get a little bit bigger. And every time I do that, I come back within a couple of days and they're like yellow and mushy and just not mushy. Something There's something on them and they're not good anymore. Like literally within a couple of days because I keep trying to let it get a little bit bigger because the head is like really small. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. If you have any tips on broccoli especially growing in my area i'm in zone 7a in in the state of tennessee please drop them below i would love to know but yes we have a whole row of broccoli we got broccoli in the raised bed so i'm trying it again in the ground in the raised bed to see if i can just get some broccoli on my plate that's what we're trying to do so while he's doing that i'm going to go ahead and start putting our hoops out um, and see kind of where we are from a spacing and what we have left Okay, so I only have four hoops. That got me halfway down the row. So technically I probably need at least three more. I don't have any more unless I take them from the raised beds. So let me go assess the situation in the raised beds and see if I'm willing to get rid of them. Let's see. So I have two raised beds that have hoops in them. So the only option I have is to take a couple of hoops out of these beds. 
if I do that, then the fabric will lay probably flat on some of these. Um, I still have these covered because again, with the temperatures, we're still having um, 75 degree days. And so I think the insects are still out somewhat. I actually just sprayed BT because on some of the ones that I just put out last week and I already see like some bug damage um, in this first bed here because it's not as secure because it's a little bit shorter um, and doesn't go all the way to the floor. So they could get in if they wanted to. I saw some bug damage that tells me the bugs are still out somewhat. Um, let's take a closer look and just see. To take the hoops out, I would probably do it in these back ones is what I'm thinking. And then it can kind of just lay flat. This bed here is more established, um, has more plants that's a, a little bit bigger in here. So, like I see, hmm, let me go take a look and see. Hopefully you guys saw what I did. I got four. I feel like I stole them. <laughs> okay, so I got four. And you saw what I did. I kind of went to the back of each bed. So on that first bed, I, and those were kind of tall, but it laid over it. It was still fine. So that works out good. And then on the second bed that I went to, I just planted that stuff out at the bottom. So it's relatively short. And it allowed me to lay the insect netting flat and to actually make it more secure. Because, of course, the higher the, these are, the more fabric so quote unquote you need because it has to go over it so when I took those two out it was able to lay flat and actually cover it a little bit better so we're going to put these four in the row um, that we're doing now and it should be enough to take care of the whole row once we get all the plants in the ground then we're going to put insect netting over it secure it and that row will be done <music> husband's getting the last one in the ground i have the hoops everything is in the ground in this row so i think we can say that we did it so now the only thing that's left for this row is to put the insect netting on um, but everything is in the row we will of course water it um, and then of course the drip will come on tonight to um, saturate it even more the I'm not gonna say bad news. The other news is that was essentially just one tray. Yeah, one tray and a half. I still have a whole tray of stuff left. Um, and I'm looking around to see what, so I do have the like the row behind me, the tomato row. I'm gonna pull that up. Tomatoes are on there, they're green. The only ones that are blushing and turning red are the large red cherry tomatoes, but they just don't taste the best. Um, so I'm not gonna even try to keep them um so i have that whole row behind me that can still have stuff in it that's supposed to be collard greens i don't know that i have any more collard greens y'all this has not been my my year with my collard greens i only have one row planted um of greens so i got this whole row behind me that's available and then i have one two three four uh, like 10 holes on the row in front of me that's it and then everything at all the planting spaces will be planted so in essence, I'm probably looking at about 35 plants um, and I probably have that, but it's not collards. I think it's more cabbage and kale and things like that. So I may just end up with one row of collards. At this point, I'm not starting any more seeds um, be um, before we go out of town because I know that they're not going to have time to get big enough to put out, um, nor do I want to leave them on the table um, for them to, they won't be able to be watered. So... I'm not going to start anymore. Obviously, I can always start some more later on and do another succession when I come back. 
but what we have i'm just trying to get everything that i have ready out in the ground so that gives me like 35 more spaces um left to do so we'll see what we have but we'll go ahead and water this stuff in and get the insect netting on it and as you can see we're losing daylight yet again it gets dark so early so so early <laughs> If you're working like a traditional schedule, it's hard to come out here like one at one and two. And you know, it's so funny because in the summertime, you're not trying to come out here at one or two. So you don't even build your schedule around that because it's too hot. You almost have to kind of like flip your schedule if you have that liberty to come out here much earlier because literally it gets dark so quick and it keeps backing up, backing up, backing up. But while I'm talking, let me get to watering. Okay, y'all, I'm stepping into the light. <laughs> this is the last light that is left. It's darker out there than it is in here. To go ahead and end this video, you probably saw us trying to put the, the insect netting on. It did not cover the whole row. I have no idea why. So I don't know if the one beside it, because I it covered the whole row, and I thought I ordered the exact same length or the same measurement. And I even have some left over on the row beside it to the right. But this one did not cover the whole row like the rest of them. I have no idea why. But that's all I have. And so we're going to pray tonight that they are spared until I can get my hands on some more. I definitely want to make sure that I keep this insect netting secured and labeled when we're done with it. Because I have had to buy quite a few. Quite a few. Anyway, thank you guys for joining us today. I appreciate the push, the energy to get it done. We didn't get it all done, but we did get one more row. So we're one step closer to being done. So really, we only have a tray and a half left to do um, and a row and a half left to do. So a tray and a half, a row and a half. I think we can do it. What about you? But remember, we got here by just being consistent and doing a little bit every single day. So as always, I want to encourage you, do what you can when you can, even if it's just 20 or 30 minutes. Every little bit counts and helps move you in the right direction. I hope that your gardens are thriving. I hope that you are thriving as a person. Remember, gardening is a journey. Let's grow together. Can't wait to see you next time.